Uh, I'm going to show you uh, how everything works, all the moving parts of the burner work to support what happens in the atomizing chamber. Uh, the first thing I like to do is I like to take the flame tube, air tube, front flange assembly out. Um, and what that's going to do is going to get me access to the atomizing chamber, transformer, and photocell. Um, there's two different ways to do that. If for some reason you had to replace the flame tube air tube, uh, flame tube is on the inside, air tube is on the outside. Um, there's a key lock system that uses about three screws here. These screws uh, and this key lock system was designed so that you don't have to take the screws all the way out. Um, there's one at the left side, right side, and at about the six o'clock position. Um, back them out and there's two slots. There's some big slots on the flame tube. You basically turn it to the big slots and it pops right out. Okay. Um, the, to, to put it, to replace it, if you ever had to, if it was damaged, tore up, uh, got hit by a roadside bomb, whatever you want to call it, you need to replace it and you only wanted to buy the flame tube air tube assembly without the front flange, you could replace it by just removing those three screws. Uh, the flame tube also is detached, simply pulling it apart like this. Okay. Uh, there's only one way to put this flame tube air tube together. Um, there's some stops on the flame tube that roll along the side of the flame tube here. And if you noticed, the stops uh, on the bottom side of it run all the way to the edge. On the top side of it, they only they stop about a quarter of an inch from the edge. And that is so that they stop before this lip here. Okay. Uh, also, it's so that you don't put it in the wrong way. It will not let you. It will stop. <clears throat> the combustion process happens on the back side where the atomizing chamber is at. Air and uh, oxygen is introduced, hits these louvers, creates a swirl. We blast it in stages. So all of the combustion process actually happens in about three inches of inside of the flame tube. Uh, uh, flame tube uh, in our electronic burner. Most high pressure burners rely on a firebox as part of the combustion process. We don't. We have it staged inside of about three inches. Um, the oxygen air actually is introduced between the flame tube air tube through this small little gap here. Okay. And when you attach it to the atomizing chamber, the flame tube hugs the front of the atomizing chamber here and the air actually leaks out from here from this gap between the atomizing chamber and falls between the flame tube air tube and hits the louvers alright anybody got any questions for that um, to take the front flange off uh, there's four screws uh, to the left and to the right bottom right left corner um, if you're facing the airtronic burner uh, at about midway on the right corner, uh, if you're facing the airtronic again, and then top right and top left, uh, about center to the airtronic, if you're facing the airtronic burner. Uh, facing it, what I mean by facing it is if you're looking at the atomizing chamber. So you basically take those screws out. Can you take the front flange assembly? off along with that at the yes, same time? Yes, yes. There are, there are ways if you wanted to just skip and get to the, the atomizing chamber with this attached, with the flame tube air tube attached. And you basically turn these when you're putting it back in to till it hits the big slots. You keep turning it and turning it until it falls in place. And then you turn it to the small slots and then you close it up. So if you wanted to take the front flange like Austin was asking and you don't have a need to take the flame tube air tube off you can essentially just back out the four screws okay. and then the front flange flame tube air tube assembly come right out like that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, um, so again, there's there's different ways of doing this. 
when you troubleshoot a burner, you don't have to take it down all the way down. You don't have to go to the front flange if you've got a fuel problem, obviously. Um, but I am taking it apart to show you how everything works <clears throat> for teaching purposes. So, does that answer your question, sir? Yes, sir. <laughs> Uh, in the front flange, there's a gasket that's attached to it. Um, if you ever need to replace that, if it gets tore up, swells up over time because of heat, elements, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, like anything else, it's rubber, it wears down, you might need to replace it if it's cracked, tore. Um, you can order these also by themselves, they have their own NSN number and everything. Uh, but if you notice the shape, it's only shaped one certain way, so you can't put it in there like this. <laughs> uh, it falls inside of this rim here. So when you replace it, you line up these two uh, tabs here. And then make sure that it falls in its seat so that when you're attaching it back to the lower fan house, if this isn't on its seat and it's out of its seat like this, it'll create a leak where oxygen can leak out of, therefore creating a possible disturbance in the combustion process. A disturbance in the force. Yeah, it's disturbance in the force. <laughs> um, so, uh, you want to make sure that when you install it back in, if it's nice and seated in the seat for the back end, you're good to go. Uh, after you've installed it, you want to inspect it to make sure again it hasn't fall out of its, fell out of its seat. Uh, uh, one of the big things that I probably should, should, uh, uh, say is that if you're doing this for the first time you don't just want to throw screws and parts on the table okay you want to make sure that you put the screws and everything with whatever you're taking off so you know where everything goes all right um i have some people that put the screws back in like this so that they know that they go back in there once they take everything off. Smart idea. Um, Real smart. By tomorrow, you guys should probably know every screw and <laughs> flange and part in here. Uh, if you want. I know this burner backwards or whatever and forward so I can throw stuff all over the place uh, and know where every screw goes. But until you get that good, um, you want to make sure you keep all the screws where with, every, with everything. Now, I'm sorry, let me get back up here. Um, so the reason I took out the front flange and flame tube, air tube assembly again, is because that now it gains me access to the atomizing chamber, okay? The transformer and essentially the, the photocell, all right? To replace the photocell, I mean the atomizing chamber, um, you don't really need any tools, it pops right out, you basically what I like to do is lay the airtronic burner on its backside. And remember, when you're doing this, you want to make sure that the burner is drained, okay, completely drained, which means the sump is drained on the airtronic burner. So there's no residual fuel laying inside the sump. Because if you don't, you start turning this thing upside down, you end up with a big old mess and having to take everything and wipe everything down, okay? So very, 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 very important, drain the burner first. Uh, again, to get to the atomizing chamber, you want to unplug the igniter from the transformer right here, okay? Uh, you want to unplug it from there, and then you take the atomizer chamber, and it pops right out. No tools. Right out. Okay. Um, in the back, you'll now notice... You're saying that, that it'd be nice to have something that plugs up these, these holes. And we, we do have oh, something. I'll we'll show it to you. Oh, we do, and we have washers that are... We have uh, so little plugs over. that go onto these. Okay. Basically, these two, these are the key uh, ports in the atomizing chamber if these two get... If you drop this in the mud, obviously you do not want to do that. This is the heart of the burner. So you want to take care of this part of the burner, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, if you're taking this apart, if you're taking it out for some reason and you know you're going to reuse it, there's a little Tupperware in your maintenance kit. Put it in there or wrap it up with something. You know, do not like drop that. There, right? Yeah. Do not drop this on the deck, okay, uh, or in the mud. Um, the igniter, you also do not want to drop the igniter on the table with the igniter facing on the table because somebody can come by, put some pressure on it, break the igniter, and now you have to replace the igniter. 
to replace the igniter while we're at that, you use a little Allen wrench, back out that little lock. Alright, once you back that out, you don't have to take that screw all the way out, just until it frees it. Um, once it lets it loose, you slide the igniter out, grab another one from your maintenance kit, put it right back in, tighten the, uh, the screw until it holds it. It's just meant to hold it. You don't have to super tighten it, okay? Uh, that's how you would replace it. So again, when you're putting it down on the table, put it down with the igniter facing up, okay? And essentially have something covered up. Um, so when you take the atomizing chamber out, what that also gains you access to the photocell. It exposes the photocell and the transformer, all right? Uh, to replace the transformer for whatever reason, there are three wires that plug into it. Um, green and yellow is the ground, okay? Ground. Uh, brown is main power. And blue is neutral, okay? To remember things, I like to try to use analogies sometimes. Or uh, So what I like to do is I like to, if I have this standing straight up, um, and I don't really know which way to wire this thing, I can't remember. Um, the brown is what I, what I like to um, uh, make the analogy to is dirt, which is on the ground. Closest okay. to the ground. Closest to the ground. Blue is the sky. So blue goes over the ground. On top, uh, blue is over the uh, the sky is over the ground. So you plug in the brown one first, and then the sky goes on top. Okay, that's how I remember it. The brown one's the main power. All right, um, and then the actual electrical ground, it it's got a tab in it, so it's smaller than all the other ones. So you can't plug it into anything else. If you look at the tabs, this one is smaller than the other ones. We made it nice and tight so you can't pull it out. That's, uh, that's if you were taking the transformer out. Yeah. <coughs> Would you have to take that out? Yeah, you have to unplug the transformer. Okay, if you look at the tabs here, see how wide this one is versus that one? And so what that means is you can't plug the ground into this wide tab. It won't let you. All right. So obviously if you know where the brown one goes and you know where the blue one goes, the only one left is the yellow and brown ground one which connects to the third tab. That's how I remember that anyways. That's right. So once you have the wires disconnected from the transformer, um, then there's two screws that hold the transformer, one underneath the airtronic. Yeah. Uh, these are wood screws. Uh, again, you don't want to overturn these because you can crack the plastic tabs.